story that, that makes this really for real. Karen and I had a really good friend, a wonderful woman of God. She was a believer and in faith, and she was dying of cancer. Very serious. And every day she would play, pray, God heal me. We would pray, God heal Elaine. Please, Lord. She would pray, and she kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I want to say that the miracle was that she was healed, she was fine and cured of the cancer. That is not the case. She died. She died. And I remember for a second thinking, God, we prayed. This was a wonderful woman. She was in faith. She prayed. Why, if, if you're going to heal anybody, why wouldn't it have been her? And somebody told me, said, Andrew, what do you mean? You don't think your prayer got answered? I'm like, well, obviously not. He said, you don't understand. God's understanding is different. That woman is in heaven, healed. She's a believer. In fact, if she heard you praying, if there was a moment when you were praying after she died, and she heard it, she would run to the Lord and say, No, stop it. Don't answer that. I'm here. I'm with you. I love you. This is awesome. I have the healing. It was just in a different way of what we thought. She was healed. Some of you are dying in a delay for some kind of answer. That's the place where God wants to build your faith in the miracle. His delays don't mean his denial. It's just his timing is different than ours. Some of you are dying in the blood. The third and final character is Mary in the story. And in verse 20, um, it's, and we're actually going to kind of backtrack, is Jesus is just arriving. It says, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed home. Okay, so Jesus is coming. Lazarus is dead. Martha rushes out to greet him, but Mary stays home. See, Mary had some death her death and she was discouraged. Mary was dead in her discouragement. Oh, Jesus is here. Whatever. I'm just going to stay home. Just hang out at home. So it's done. She was discouraged. How many of you have ever been discouraged before? It just made you want to give up and want to quit and just say, forget it. Just stay home. <laughs> Don't even want to go anywhere. Um, back to the ski trip. We finally ski after getting there. And, and so again, Brad and I find ourselves in the same pickup truck, following everybody else to the mountain to ski. It's about an hour away from where we stayed. And we get in this deep theological conversation um, on the way to, to ski. Now, this is my first time skiing, and I was a little scared. I was so thankful for the theological conversation that got my mind off, off of being afraid of skiing. But we finally pulled up in the parking lot of the mountain, and we ended our conversation. And I look out, and I see all these people coming to ski. And I look out. And I see the people in the parking lot putting on helmets and goggles and astronaut uniforms. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck's going on here? And I look up at the mountain and I see this mountain 10,000 feet in the air, steep. These little, tiny, little courses going down the mountain, lined with thousands of trees. People killing trees on each side of these little courses, I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. I'm going to go up there? And I look at Brad and I go, Brad, are you sure you don't want to stay in the truck and continue this theological conversation? And he's like, no, you got to put it into practice. You need to go up there and pray. <laughs> and so, so we get out and we get in there. And, and you know, of course, some of the people in our, uh, had already skied. Some of them had not. I was one of the, the rookies. There were a few others. And so we all get held up together. And we go in and they start giving us our equipment. And they, they call out your name for your boots. And I get my boots, you know, my astronaut boots, and my skis and my poles. And I go sit down, and, and I'm just, I'm shaking putting my boots on. And I put my boots on, and this is a bad sign right here. As I sprain my finger, putting my boot on. And I'm thinking, oh, this is bad. <laughs> they haven't even put the skis on yet, I'm already injured. And so I'm getting nervous, and I get the skis on, and, and, uh, and, and I'm out there kind of in the snow trying to, to kind of get ready. And, and Tim is out there, and, and, and Andy Adelman is out there, and Brad is out there, and, and Jay Johnson. And, and we have men from our church that are there around me. And I'm like, I cannot t let them know that I'm afraid because they look like they're fine. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah. And, and they're like, you want to take classes here? No, just go for it. Just do it. And, um, you know, they're like, okay. And so they're kind of helping me, telling me how to do the snowplow thing. And I'm like practicing the snowplow. You know, and I'm standing there. And we go down there to hundreds of people. Hundreds. And we go down to get in line to get on the ski lift, and Tim's in front of me kind of telling me what to do. And I get to the line, and I fall down in line. 
And Tim's going, Pastor, do you need help? And I'm thinking, oh, don't call me Pastor. You know? I'm just to say Pastor. And I'm thinking this in my head. I mean, I'm going to shame the guy, you know? Because I'm saying, oh, look at the pastor. You don't know how to ski, you know? And uh, I'm scared. And so I finally get up, and, and I'm like, oh, man. So I get on the ski lift. I'm sitting on there with Tim. I'm like, we're on the ski lift. We get off the ski lift. I fall off the ski lift. And just, you know, bite it, getting off the ski lift. And, and then so I start falling Tim down the mountain, and I'm like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm going good. And he goes, okay, now you got to turn. Start to turn. Bam! You know? Let me tell you what. I was on the snow several times during the day. And there was one point where I got a little bit discouraged, and I thought, you know what? I think I'm just going to go sit in a nice warm place and just drink Starbucks and watch everybody else. I mean, there was one moment where I almost thought that because I was a little bit discouraged. But then I kind of got the hang of it and then started thinking it was really, really fun after that. But you know what? Here's the deal. That's a funny story. But a lot of people's lives are exactly like that. Is they are so scared they're discouraged. And they just want to go out. I don't even want to try. There are people who are, who are discouraged in their sin. They've had some type of, of habit or habitual sin that has kept them off the mountain. And they're like, I'm never, I'm never going to win. I just give up. Jesus could never heal me. He could never make it right. And so they're, they're so discouraged. Some people have given up on their God-given dreams. And they're discouraged. They're dying in discouragement. You know that God has great plans for you. And He's got things that are good for you. But you say, I just don't see it. There's a little bit of delay in it. I just give up, just whatever. I'm just going to go sit up. I'm never going to get up. I'm never going to get off the porch and get up. They're discouraged. Some are dead in doubts. Some are dead in a delay. And some are dead in a discouragement. My question here is this. What in your life is, is dead? Relationships? Is it dreams? Is it faith? Is it passion? Maybe one time you were passionate after God. And for whatever reason, that has cooled down. Had to die. Well, here's the good news for you: is God wants to raise that from the dead because He can. Now let's finish this out. John 11, verse 33. There's an amazing statement right here. This is just really cool. It says, "When Jesus saw Martha weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid it?" He asked. "Come and see, Lord," they replied. And then got the shortest verse in the whole Bible, which you know very well. It says, Jesus wept. Why in the world did he leave? He knew he was going to raise the guy from the dead, but yet he still cried. Why did he cry? He cried because he saw the pain, and it shows how much he cares for his people, and it shows how much he cares for you. Have you ever wondered what God is doing right now? What is Jesus doing right now? Where is he? We're celebrating him today. Where is he at? Well, he's in heaven. He's at the right hand of God, and He's forever making intercession for you. And for some of you, He is doing the very same thing that He did in this verse this week. He's crying. Why is He crying? He's crying because he, he sees that there's some death. And He sees the pain that's there. But the good news is, is He wants more than anything to raise that up. So that, he, that you can be alive again. Are you dead in doubts? In delay? Discouragement? My, my, I talked to you about Christian. My, my other little boy, Luke, a couple years ago was very, very sick. In fact, he was so sick, he was dehydrated. We had to take him to the hospital. He had to get an IV in his little hand. I never, I, at that point, I had never had an IV before. And he's like three years old. He's having to get an IV and sit in a hospital bed. And I just sat there, and I just, I just wanted to weep over this little guy because of what he was having to endure. And I just kept thinking, man, if I could change places with him, I would do it like that. And it's... I would change with him, and I just wanted to hold that little guy until his tears went away. And I think that's a great picture of what God wants to do with each and every one of you. He wants to hold you until the tears go away. And he weeps, and he wants what's dead to come back to life. In fact, he wants to change places with you so that he can take your pain, and he can take your sin, and take all the things that cause you to be dead and not alive, and just take them on so that you can live. Oh, gosh, wait a minute. By the way, he did that. 